2 to the power n minus 1. Yeah? Yes, yes, good, good, minus 1, yes. All right, so uh, now, can you tell me if there is a 64 disk that, according to the legend or the myth, if there's 26, uh, tw uh, sorry, 64 disks, how many moves do you need? Can you do a quick math? 2 to the power 64 minus 1. How many uh, moves? If there is 64 moves. So, sorry, disks. Anyone? Do you have calculator in your phone? Or are you? Okay, Sakib, so yeah, thank you for your answer. Okay, let's see how many moves are should be in there. So yeah, so this is actually, if you can you see the big number there? So that's the number. Yeah, the question was if there are, uh, so we have done one, two, with one, two, three, four discs. So if there are 64 discs, uh, according to the legend, so how many moves uh, there would be? That was the question. So this is a big number. Now, can you read this number for me? Who can read this number for me? Like million, billion, trillion, quantillion. Can you read this big number for me? Nope. Try, anyone? Okay, uh, say 18 hexillion, okay. All right, I'm giving you 30 seconds. Okay, Christian gave me another answer, all right. I'm gonna reveal the answer in a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for your answers who answered it. I'm gonna show you the answer now. This is the answer. So it's 18 quintillion, 446 quadrillion, 700. So you can read it yourself. And tell me if I'm right. Because, you know, these type of things, we actually going to use a lot in, in computer science because, you know, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte. So you can see this, uh, this list. So we've got uh, different uh, types of uh, the scale. Yep. So we gonna mega, giga, tera when you use computer. So we use this, this type of calculation. So this type of things a lot. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm going to pass it to Solomon now to uh, actually discuss more about this. So this is a kind of algorithm. We call it recursion. And this is not this recursion is not only solving this puzzle. We can uh, use this to, you know, SatNav you use for your um, uh, in the car. That SatNav also use this type of recursive algorithm or different shortest path algorithm or different kinds of maze games. So that so this algorithm is very popular. So step by step. So when you do it yourself, it takes long. But when the computer does it, it it really efficient. So you need to tell the computer how to solve this problem. So we as a human being, we know how to solve the problem. We find out the formulas and everything. But you need to tell the computer how to do it. So that that's what we call algorithm or step by step uh, uh, process how to solve a problem. So Solomon will tell you uh, more about uh, how the algorithm and. Uh, he's going to do a flowchart or a type of algorithm with you. Okay, so I'm going to uh, pass it to Solomon. Um, well done, guys. Okay. Um, okay. Well done, guys. This is good. Good start. So your take home is that a difficult problem can be solved if you can form an algorithm. And that's a skill you're going to use Okay, guys, yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Why did you guys not tell me you can't hear me? Guys, just feel free. We're going to be your teachers for the next two years. We're going to be having fun. We're going to be 
solving problems. So let it start from now on, right? If there's a problem, just say it. I mean, feel free. We are all friendly in as much as we are here to give you the, the knowledge you need to take you to your next step in life, which is university. But we're all very friendly. Okay, yeah. I was saying forming algorithms is a skill you're going to use to be solving problems. I mean, some problems will become difficult, as you've seen from Sider's presentation, without an algorithm. And which, rightly, I was very impressed. Some of you quickly formed an algorithm. I have a feeling most of you really we are not moving that those disks from pole to pole. You don't. You just follow the algorithm. That's why you are giving your answer so quickly. Good. So, um, scientists have failed in so many projects, you name it, from NHS to centralized NHS, which is a famous um, example of failure, going back to history. That's why the scientists have come up with a structured approach to solving problems, building softwares, building, building systems. And that approach is called the SDLC. You're going to live and breathe SDLC. I'll let Peter tell you a bit more about SDLC. Peter, um, let me just turn off my... Okay, hello everyone. My name's Peter, I'm one of the other lecturers here. Now, SDLC, first, you, does anyone know what that stands for? It's four key words. Anyone? Okay, that's fine, you know, for you, honestly. It stands for the software development life cycle. Now think about when you're doing a project. First thing you do, you plan, then you analyze what the problem is, you start a design, and then you start developing into integration and testing, implementation, maintenance, and planning. So think about when you're working in video game development, you, you're planning for a game, you're writing a proposal, you're analyzing what kind of game it's gonna be. It could be a first person shooter. Then you've got design. So think about the design aspects. Is it going to be a 2D game? Is it going to be a 3D game? And then you start development and coding. And then when that's done, they start integrating and testing the game to make sure it functions. And then finally, it's implementation, so finalizing that game. And then maintenance, so making sure it's running efficiently. And then the cycle continues in case it's getting updated over time. Do we understand that now about the software development life cycle? Okay, yeah. remember it's about planning, implementing, and creating. Okay, could I go to the next slide, slide please? So this is why this is why it's related to building an algorithm, as Solomon said. Okay, it's done and designed a stage of a system that software development life cycle, so making sure it meets that purpose. So and one purpose way in how we do this is designing flow charts to show that when we make something it works and it functions efficiently and it gives a visual representation of the problem because a lot of you will be new to programming so and coding so we put it from a breakdown point on how to solve a problem because part of the course will be based on logical thinking like what Saida done where using maths to solve problems and the outputs used could I go to the next slide please so this is where you have these different functions here or different symbols to describe the working of a program. The main ones are as follows. You've got the start and the end, so starting development and how it ends, what the input and outputs will be, and, and you've got the developments. So think about the start. This is what we use to either start and end a flow chart, typically we'll only start an end symbol, but for larger flow charts, this can be used as multiple end symbols. So think about when you do a program and it might have different ends, or say a video game, it has different endings. Inputs and outputs, so what you're gonna inputting. So when you import a command, say on your mouse, it does a function. And the process, and it's a rectangle, and it's used to do calculations. So, for example, x equals x plus 4. Then you've got decision. We've got to make a decision. So, this is related round things like such as if statements. 
is used for decision whether the question is to change or you need to go down another path. So if statements will be a very common fact on the course. And this arrow is a symbol is used to show how to travel through the flow chart. Okay, so the arrow keys. So could you go to the next slide, please? Say that. Now I want you to write an algorithm using flow charts that calculates a square of a number. Now I want you to, I want you to use the find option and to choose it. If not, end end the program. So we're going to. I want you to make a flow chart yourself from 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 a suggested example. So so from this task, you go to. So I want you to think about a task and how to solve a problem. And I'll leave it to Suleiman. What would you like them to do, Suleiman? Okay, guys, um, just put your thinking caps on and remember what Peter told you. Um, we think about solving a problem. Um, got inputs, outputs, processes, decision making, then connectors, arrows are connected between the different symbols, right? So now, ready for it? The task is. Go to the third slide, please. The task is um, okay. You're going to draw a flow chart that squares a number, and then um, it should enable the user to repeat the process. Let's say if I enter the number two, the program will allow me to enter the num another number then the program will ask me if I want to end, if I'm done. If I'm done, the program finishes. So think about it. Um, I am not sure how many of you have got, um, have got um, um, PCs, laptops with you, or how many people are using phones. If you are not using your, if you are using phones, then it will, will be a problem. Then we've got to think of another way. Um, I had some blank blank symbols here, but I think it's not showing up on this slide. Um, yeah, go to it. Next. Okay, Solomon, can I add something to it? Yeah. Okay. So um, if you look at the slide here uh, from the symbols, it says start of the program. First symbol is the start and end of the program. And the next one is for the input and output. So you can actually think of from the scenario. So it says that, uh, calculating uh to the square of a number so can you tell me when you uh try let's say you are using a calculator so when you are trying to uh calculate the square of a number how many inputs you need can anyone tell me how many inputs you need when you do uh, square two inputs uh what are those i think one yes so yeah just a number so when you use calculator that is the number that you put that's one input how many output you outputs you will get one well done good so that means from these symbols you know these are the second one second symbol in here for input output so you can use this symbol to show that to take the input and showing the output okay so now can you tell me what are the process what is the process behind it how do you actually uh, calculate the square? What is the formula for that? Yes, good, Christian. Number times number. Yeah, well done. So which symbol are you going to use for that? So when you say number times number, that's the process. Which symbols are you going to use? Can you tell me from the screen which one? Oh. Right. Angle. Well done, Elizabeth. Yes. So you know, when we start, we can say start of the program, that symbol we can use. And then for input and output, we can use that parallelogram one. And then for the process, which is number times number, that is the rectangle one. Okay. Now we have got and to connect those symbols. So first start it, then pick the input, then do the process, which is number times number, and then uh, go for output. So that's how we uh, go in the flowchart. So step-by-step -step, uh, format of solving a problem or algorithm. Yeah, we can say. So these arrows is to connect from start to input, input to process, process to output. So this, this One more. Is, 
one more this last one is the decision mm -hmm. so decision is it will ask you the program will ask you that if you want to calculate a square for another number so if it is yes then you go start the pro process again and then you put another number to calculate the square so you keep going when it is yes and if you don't want to calculate any more numbers then say no and you end the program so that's how to so these symbols we're going to use so uh, uh as solomon said we are not sure if you have got any paper or pen to draw it or so that's i just describe it how it works so when you have these symbols and you know how what the process will be it is easier for you to tell the computer what to do step by step using a programming language you know you do coding so for the coding this is the first thing you're gonna do creating a flowchart to know when your program will start and then what the inputs you're gonna take and then what are the process you're gonna go through let's say we've done the uh, the tower of an i think so you need to tell the computer the process so two to the power in minus one so that is the process behind it and then what the output you're gonna have after that problem so these flowchart symbols are same for all the problems you're gonna solve in your computer science program or uh, i mean normal day-to-day -day life so problem solving when you're using computers yeah so that is a, a very interesting one because uh, when you have these symbols and then you have a proper structure of solving the problem it's very easier for you to write code uh, using the programming language okay uh, Solomon, do you want to give them another task? Or uh, just show them the answer. Next slide. Okay. So that is the suggested answer. answer. I don't know if it's clear. Can you see? Is... Yeah, zoom in plus. Uh, okay. Let me just. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Is it a bit better now? okay thank you so yes you know they start the program with the symbols yeah and then uh sorry this is not there's a mistake it should be input not output input so please enter the number you want to square so that will be the input and then input will be the number entered so that is uh the thing and then answer will be just the process is number times number and then the output will be the answer and then again it will add if you want to uh, enter another number okay then if it is yes then you go back to the start again and sorry this is this should be an input not output she's asking so, a question yeah okay. yeah asking a question and then again you put another number there and then you go back to the to the next step so you keep going uh if you want to do another one another one but when you want to stop if you don't want to do any other square then no and then you say output by or show them the output so and then you end the program so it's a very very simple one i mean uh, to start with but in terms of different games or puzzles or stuff the the process are really complicated or the algorithms are very complicated but these are the symbols you're going to use to actually structure uh the whole program and then from this structure then you can actually write the code uh, based on that or some algorithms based on that okay uh, so now we would like you guys to do one exercise by yourself yes uh, we actually put that as a group work but uh, anyway you can't do it because we're doing it online so uh, you can do it individually so the problem uh, the problem you need to solve is the program gives the customer the option to accept cash or account payment when their money is converted to another currency so your task is to come up with an algorithm using flowchart for the uh, for the program mm -hmm. uh, so you need to use those symbols input output process decision so uh just converting from pound to euros or euros to pound so can you tell me what the inputs will be so then, yes so what will be the inputs in uh in using the input sign currency good so you need to put a currency as an input what would be the processing So after you took the input from the user, conversion, good, Maxim, well done. So conversion, changing the currency. So what would be, what is the formula behind it to changing it? So let's say I put that in a pound, uh, in a pound sterling. Yes, times 1.2, well done, circuit. So that is the process. So you need to use that rectangle sign to put the pounds. 
uh, to conversion. And then, is there any decision making? You know the diamond sign there. Anyone? Do you actually need that diamond sign there? Yes. For oh, for what? Okay. It can be no or it can be yes. If you want to convert another number, another then you can use that symbol. Or if you just want to convert one, that's fine. So what's going to be the output? When you don't connect coming. Okay. Yes. So what's going to be uh, the new value, the converted value? So see, so you know in Google, when you see, when you go to Google and search by converting currencies, then you convert one currency to another currency, then you, this, this is the program, this is the flowchart behind that. If you search on Google, you can see lots of converting software. So this is, they actually do this kind of flowchart before they do actually the, uh, the, write the code for this, this uh, problem. Okay. So, yes. Uh, Just adding to what Saida said, if you look at the problem here, it should give you the option to give, receive cash payment or pay into your account. So how do you solve that? Uh, just to conject, just remember uh, the the program. Yes, well done, Jaden. Yeah. The, the program can do very a, a complicated task, but it has to follow sets of steps of instructions which need to be developed. So you got to make sure all the steps are there. So do think about that when you're solving this problem. So all the steps are followed. Okay. So yeah. Well done, you guys who gave the answer. Yeah, you saw yes, that. Christian, you've done very well. Said, mm -hmm. ask the user for is in the diamond. Good, well done. Yeah. Okay, sorry. That. I just wanted them not to skip that bit. Okay. Yeah, so you could just use this blank one to put those things, but I think they have already answered, answered it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is the answers. So, yeah, again, this would be an, uh, not an output input. Sorry about that. So, please enter the amount you want to convert, and then you take the amount as an input, and then you convert it to the process. Oh, yeah, then the account payment. So, if it is an account payment, then you put the account detail. If this is not an account payment, it's a cash payment, you go to uh, please take the cash, uh, ca cash amount and then amount in euros are transferred one and then end the program okay so that's going to be the flowchart yeah and from this flowchart you can actually develop there is another language you call uh, pseudo code file algorithm so it's kind of a, a middle flowchart and programming language middle you have the pseudo code so we, we are not going to cover that one today but yeah so that is a first this is the first approach to actually solve a problem in in computer or, or computer program. Okay. okay. New are is asking a question there. Um, um New are, are you asking about the pseudo code? Um, we could just even use another decision yeah. to ask them if they want to do it again. Yes, Jaden, uh, yeah, that's right. You can use, that's very, very good. Yeah, you can use another decision to just ask them if they want to do. Yes, good, good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, answer new new Al's question. Uh, what was new? You are you were asking about pseudo code? You said um, what is it called? Maybe you didn't hear me. Me said me said it pseudo code. P S E U. Oh, okay. Yeah. D O C O D E. The, yeah, that's called the, pseudo code. Yeah, the yeah. prefix pseudo. Remember the prefix pseudo come that comes before like instead of. So instead of actual code, there is pseudo code. So it's not strict. It doesn't follow strict rules. Yes, it's not right. actually the programming language, but it's uh, close to the programming language. So from flowchart, you can actually write a pseudo code. It's more like English-like language. And then from that pseudo code, you can actually write the actual code in your uh, actual programming code. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just to remind everyone, as Solomon and Celia just said, remember, the pseudo code is essentially the structure and framework that you prepare before you actually do the programming itself. It's the basic layout. So you, when you preempt, when you start doing code. When you think about the flow chart, think about what kind of type of code you might be putting in. This is what Pseudo code is about, making sure you follow those certain instructions. Peter, Peter uh, I didn't Peter ask you. Oh, ask you to repeat. Oh, OK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can hear me clearly, that's fine. Uh, so it's about following the sets of instructions. It's what Pseudo code is for. It's that pre-template 
for following those steps when you program. That's what it's there for, to help prepare you. Is that clear? Okay, now Peter will run you through a little quiz. But before that, can you ask, feel free to ask any questions. We'll give you another question and answer session at the end. But let you don't sit. If anything is bothering you, any questions, just ask, ask us before we move on to the quiz. Yes, um, um, those who asked for CEDA code, I'm just putting the, the name CEDA code. You can search on the internet to learn more about CEDA code, probably. So I put that in the chat box. Uh, what coding well, languages yeah. do we learn? Yeah, we will do uh, Java and C Sharp because uh, as a part of computer science, of A level computer science project, some of you may need to, uh, may want to do some gaming projects. So it's Unity and C Sharp. Uh, so we'll cover that C Sharp. And we also do Java as well. So Java, mainly Java and C Sharp. Not Java React Neural, just Java. Just Java. It's not, it's not, it's not a framework, it's a language. Yes. Uh, penetration testing we will be doing, yes, for some on the uh, vocational courses. Okay. Mike, Mike is said Python. Uh, yeah, we could, because uh, for the gaming, C Sharp is very good. That goes with Unity because Unity is a very good gaming platform, so that's why we cover C Sharp. But uh, what I would say, all the, the concepts for all the programming languages are, are the same, it's just the same tax. So we will cover from the from the basic concepts for programming, then you can convert it to any programming language you want. So different programming language, the only difference is the syntax, but the concepts are same for all the programming language. Yeah. yeah one thing I've said to my learners quite frequently is that remember, programming language is like learning another language itself. Let's say when I'm, when me, someone and Saida, where all three of us are bilingual. So, when I learn Spanish, it means when I learn another language, it becomes easier. Once you learn one programming language, you understand the differences, the similarity between the others as well. And it allows you to spread out over time. Okay? Uh, I could say JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript is a scripting language, but when you do, uh, let's say, A-level project, you, you are open to different uh, language you can use. So if you are use, uh, doing a project related to web, uh, Thing, then you can use JavaScript. You can use uh, anyway. You can. You need to use uh, HTML and CSS anyway if you do a web-based project. And you can you can add JavaScript to it. So it's a scripting language. It's not a proper programming language, but it's a scripting language. So yes, if you do a web-related project, you need to use. Uh, you can use JavaScript. Yeah. But as I said, all these programming languages are the same. All the concepts are same. You just need to apply it. Uh, maybe yeah. I mean, as I say, I mean, we will cover. If you know C sharp or if you know Java, you can convert it to Visual Basic because concepts are the are the same. Anyway, yeah. And if you want to do like a mobile application, so if you know Java, you can do a, a Android mobile app as well. And as I said, if you know one programming language well, it's just syntax uh, changes you need to do. Okay. okay. Uh, well, before we get off, oh, there, is a, oh, there are more questions here. I didn't do Michael, Michael, that's not a problem. I mean, you, as long as you've got maths, you yes. can come in and study computer science. You can even go to uni, uni without without computer science and study computer science. So that's not a problem at all. When we are teaching, we don't make any preconception. We start teaching from the basics and take you up. Those who don't computer science. It will be a bit of an advantage, but those who haven't, they will learn when you come to our classes. Uh, real time. Okay, you said um, answer before since. Okay, but um, are the exams going to require us to code? Yes, in A level, if you're doing A level computer science, uh, there are two two papers and one project, final project. So paper one is uh, the coding part. So you need to do an on screen test doing coding, and paper two is a theory bit. So that is 40%, and 20% is your final project. And for a final project, you can do an app, a program, a website, anything you can do. But we will teach you everything from scratch, how to code. So if you haven't done uh, computer science before in GCSE, that's not a problem. That's not a problem at all. So we're going to teach you from the scratch basic stuff and build your knowledge on, on that. Yeah. Yeah, because remember, we're here to help you, and everyone's going to start differently. But everyone gets a fair chance if you've done GCC computer science or not. 
as long as you have that dedication and determination that's what we want to see and we'll be guiding you along the way throughout the course okay uh, Connor said for the final project, can you code? Yes, you can do code in any language because, as I said, if you are doing a web related project, then you need to use HTML, CSS, and the stuff. If you want to do a mobile app, then is if it's an Android or iOS or Windows application. So, based on that, you need to, if you're doing a game project, you may use Unity or you can use Java, uh, those kind of language. Yeah, so yeah, you can. That's, that's fine. Mike, uh, what's the difference? between A-levels and level three diploma? Uh, A-level is mostly uh, mostly exam-based. So you have got 80% uh, exam and 20% coursework. So that's A-level, uh, mostly exam-based. And B-tech level three diploma is you have got four exam units, so four exams, and rest of it is, uh, is coursework. So that's the difference. But contents-wise is almost same. And, and B-tech is more, yeah, as I said, it's more coursework, so more hands-on. Uh, yeah, so that's the, but content-wise, is is almost same. It's just the exam and more exam in A level and and more coursework in in B Tech level three. Yes, Michael, you will be getting weekly assignments, yeah. and if you want to do some pre-learning, you can pick one of the languages Miss has just mentioned and and learn them thoroughly. You can use. W3 schools, which is quite explicit. Uh, I'll put a link in the chat box. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a good idea to get yourself a bit clued up because it, it helps prepare you. Because we'll be teaching you, but up, updating your skill set in programming or preparing for the course is, is always a recommendation you always give. Yeah, I'll put a link on there. So in W3 school, there's lots of um, programming languages in there. So you can you can start from uh, basically if you're interested in web development, website design or something kind of uh, that. So you can go to W3 schools, HTML, CSS. So that's interesting. You can design it, put some colors in there, making it. So you can start with that if you haven't done coding before. And then you can actually start with something uh, like if Java or C Java, a little bit. Uh, you can start with yeah uh, this is fun like the website one is a fun if you haven't done co uh, coding before i think you can start from here to just kind of uh, yeah. familiarize with with this so html css kind of thing. and for everyone uh we've made a little quiz for you lot as well that you can do and it'll give you a, we can test your knowledge based on what you've learned today i'll send you the link now and you can get some instant results okay so you just got the link now and it's a little quiz we made just to help you contest your knowledge as well just so you can help you prepare because i know for example michael you said about preparing and it's some insights on to what to look out for yeah just a quick note um you might not have enough time to complete the quiz because we've only got two minutes left Oh, Peter, it says ask for access. So if we can make it public, then they yeah, can. Yeah, that's fine. I can do that now. Okay. Okay. While Peter is doing that, um, because we've only got two minutes left, um, I'll ask Miss to just um, conclude the session. Uh, yes. So um, just a little bit about the course, about uh, enrollment and about the course. So if you want to do a uh, level computer, so the entry requirement is you need to have seven in maths okay and if you uh, and for BTEC computer science is uh, is six in maths okay uh, and the part there are different when you do computer science course there are different pathways you can go to. It's, it's lots of options open for you when you do computer science course you can be a website developer you can be um, a mobile app developer which is you know most of the websites has got a mobile app now. So you use mobile app for Amazon, eBay, so mobile app developer. You can be a database developer uh, and you can be a tester, software test tester or database tester. You can be a network administrator. You can go a networking pathway. So networking, database, website, games, games development. Uh, that's a very, very interesting area. You can do lots of research, like, you know, uh, medical type of research. You know, these COVID situations, there's lots of data mining and 
uh, data related data analysis uh, kind of things going on. So uh, those data analysts that uh, that's a very hot uh, topic nowadays, like data mining or data analysis. So lots of lots of uh, pathways uh, you can you can choose when you uh, choose this course. So it's a very very good course, computer science. Even if you go for BTEC, so as I say, the difference is not much content wise. So uh, if you more prefer like uh, exam, then you can go for A-levels, that's the only difference, uh, but content-wise is the same. And it's a very, very interesting topic, and we've done lots of uh, some interesting things today as, as well. So it's, if you like problem solving, if you try to try to uh, new things, uh, it's, it's a very good course for you. So uh, so 12th August is the, is the result day, and so that's the instruction for you. So if you uh, if you have already applied to the college, you will receive a link via email to enroll the day before DCSC results day. And if you haven't applied, visit newvic.ac.uk uh, slash apply. And once you have received your final DCSC results, click the link in the email and upload your results and wait for a call uh, from the college to complete the process. Okay. Oh, the so, computer science A level is done through oh, right. AQA. Yeah. Yes. And, right. and the BTEC is through Pearson's. Now, not only uh, do we teach, uh, for example, I am a part-time lecturer at the college and I do work in the tech industry, like a few, like Solomon and do work in the, te in the tech industry. Like I work in cybersecurity and run a, a startup. Solomon does research, Saida does her research as well. So we, so as well, it's, so with data mining, it's, it's one thing that I do regularly, so, and it's a lot of students where we can help get potential apprenticeships as well later on down the line where we help students who want to either go to university later on or go down the apprenticeship route. Jaden, that's fine. I'll, I'll fix that accordingly. And as uh, Peter says, still they can't yeah. it. So if you can just. Yeah, I'll be sorting that out. Okay, Solomon, yeah. do you want to say anything final? So, so that's it. Okay, so guys. Yeah. Um, Nice meeting you all. I mean, hope to see you soon after result day. And then um, I like the reactions from you. Yeah. I like your questions. It seems we're going to, it's going to be an interesting class next year. We're starting September, very yes. soon, first week in September. You see, Miss is also agreeing that yeah. you guys seem so very guys interesting. Very well. You guys did very well. You, you were responding. You're sharp. And... You're sharp guys, smart guys. Yes. That's good. Um, because of time and college regulations, we're going to end the session. But Peter will still, you can yeah. feel free to hang around and wait for the yeah. link. Yeah, the, the session has access day. It's probably taking a minute to adjust. I'll keep the link open and I'll fix that for those. Yeah, who do the so um, you had that. The link will be kept open and then um, you guys will yeah. be able to do the quiz. Okay, guys. It's a bye from for me. Yes, bye everyone. Hope to see you in September. Take care, everyone. Take care, everyone. Bye. bye. No problem. Bye. Nine more joined. What's, what's you do, Denise. Take care. Uh, okay, yeah, Jaden, you can. You can ask question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, um, on the application form, okay, can get. So, Salman, what would you, should we suggest? Yeah. So, you call the college and speak to a recruit? Yes, that would be good. Um, because there should be some kind of formal classic, formal um, result which you need for UCAS. So, if this year exams were not conducted publicly, then the best we can do uh, coming to college, yeah, coming, speak yeah to coming the, to college and speak, speak to the marketing guy. He's called uh, Mahmoud. Yeah, Mahmoud, or yeah. come to the marketing department, ask okay. for Mahmoud, or if he's not there, 
um, just and your, and your colleague. Just on the reception for recruitment. So recruitment, yeah. Because in your case, it's a bit tricky there because we cannot recruit without papers, except we do a test. If they can do a test for you, because they've done it for people before, uh, people come from overseas, they do a test for them, which puts them in to spe specific levels. So something yeah, can I, be done. I, yeah, I suggest you come to college. That would be better. Yeah. yeah. It's all right? Yeah. OK, no worries. Mm -hmm. OK, bye. Bye. Right. Um, okay, for those who are still here, Aisha, Udin, I'm going to end the call. Uh, Peter, do you want me to? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Uh, I've got the email request already sent to me, so I'll be sending them the device to do okay, that. Okay, the link will be sent to you guys. Yeah, so I've got a load of emails. Okay, so. goodbye.